So what's it all about then? I mean, haven't we had our fill of new programmes and initiatives? Why is this one so special? I'll tell you why. Because if we don't get this right, we're in real trouble. We're now competing with loads of companies who can offer our business customers everything that we can, sometimes a lot more. So why should they choose us? Just because we're BT doesn't give us a right to people's business. It doesn't give us the right to survive. If we can't compete, then soon with cable and internet phones and such, the world will be able to do quite well without us, thank you very much. So, if we're not needed, we need to be wanted. But what do our customers want? What are we competing on? Well, it's not price. Cost isn't an issue. Well, it is an issue, but it's not the issue. The issue is service. Customers choose companies that give the best service. And last year, the Telecom Managers Association rated their suppliers on the quality of their service. And where did we come? Fifth. Fifth! So where does that leave us? Hey! <laughs> it leaves us with our business being steadily eroded. This calls, rather obviously, for a change in direction. So how do we turn this around? Simple. We talk to the customer, ask them what they want, and give it to them. That's the way to win business. Giving the customer what they want, when they want it. Let's get precise. Let's have a look at those areas where we're maybe not being quite so helpful to the customer as we ought to be. And after each one, you'll get the chance to have your say. Critical? I should say it's critical. I've got five lines coming in here and every single one of them has gone down. So is the ISDN link to our Manchester office. And what do BT say? Oh, we'll send someone round tomorrow. Well, I bet if the person who said that was losing as much money as I am every minute, then they might have a slightly different understanding of the word critical. Oh, yeah, but there's other people out there in trouble as well. She's not the only one. There are rules, there are procedures. She'll have to take her turn. That's just the way it is. Oh, no, it isn't. She's quite clearly got a critical problem there, and there's probably a fair number of people in the queue ahead of her who aren't in nearly so much trouble. When a customer's in trouble, rules are there to be, well, broken. It's all a matter of prioritising, talking to the customer and finding out how critical it really is and what our options are. Do they have other lines? Can we provide them with call diversion, divert to a mobile or fax, offer call minder? If it really is critical, raise it as a customer critical fault. If all else fails, escalate. But get that fault fixed. Even when it's not critical, we still aim to fix today's fault today. If a customer reports a fault before 4pm, we want to restore service the same day. Why? Well, look at the customer satisfaction scores. These customers got today's fault fixed today, and these didn't. And unsatisfied customers are customers looking elsewhere. You heard the man, you have the authority. Do you have the commitment? I'll tell you what happened, it's quite simple. We told BT when we were going to open our Norwich office, and they said there was absolutely no way they could get the comm system in on time. So we found someone who could. End of story. Ah, oh, well, they gave us nowhere near enough notice. Customers may want something by a specific date, but with the best will in the world, that doesn't mean we can deliver it to them then. The best will in the world can accomplish anything. All it needs is a bit of personal commitment. The bottom line is that we must deliver everything by the true customer required by date. That's when they want it, not when we think we can give it to them. Again, look at the customer satisfaction scores. These customers got the date they wanted. These got the date we gave them. Big difference. So give them the date they want. That date must go on the order and can only be changed at the customer's request. And work must be done by that date. Any serious problems? Escalate. There's a helpline for last resort escalations, so use it. Don't, under any circumstances, let the customer down. Keep your promises. You know what I hate? I hate being messed about. And it seems like every time I have to phone BT, messed about. Pass from pillar to post, explaining things over and over again. Wasting my time. The way I look at it is, if I phone BT, I phone BT. It's up to them to sort it out. Well, she came through to the wrong department, didn't she? Look, we've got targets, you know. It's hard enough getting through the customers we can help. 
without bothering with the ones we can't. Anyway, how was I to know she'd already been passed on? Well, if it had been a proper handover, then he would have done. Again, the bottom line is personal responsibility for helping the customer. Only if you really, really can't help someone should you ever pass them on. And then only with a proper handover so that everyone knows what's happening. It's customer satisfaction again. These customers got passed on once. These got passed more than once. Bad news. What do you do for a living? Wrong. What you do for a living is nothing to do with the department you work for or even your job description. What you do for a living is serve the customer. Now don't get me wrong, the engineer did an excellent job, got us back up and running in no time. But I only knew he was here because I nearly tripped over him. Then he was gone, then he was back again, then he was gone again. I mean, we only knew he was finished when eventually he didn't come back. Now I had a few small changes I had to make to the system. He could have done them but I didn't get a chance to speak to him. Now we'll have to get someone else in. Well, engineers have a big workload. There's always somewhere else to be going, always another customer's problem to be fixed. If they have to spend time informing customers of their comings and goings and doing extra little bits and pieces, well, that's going to interfere with the real work, isn't it? Wrong. As engineers, what do you do for a living? Fix phones? Keep the British telecommunications network up and running? Wrong. Obviously, that's what you spend most of your time doing, but it's not what you do for a living. What's your job? Serving the customer. Service is what our customers want, above everything. So service is what they must get. You have to listen to them, empathise with them, look at it from their point of view. You have to make their problem your problem, and then solve it. After all, that's what you're there to do. And when you make a promise, keep it! In recent months, there have been many remarkable instances of people going above and beyond the call of duty to serve customers. Chris Stokes managed to install two emergency telephone lines with poles and overhead cable into the middle of a field for a Spice Girls concert, even though he only had 24 hours notice. And that won him a personal commitment award, which was nice. And here's another one. When one of our customers, the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, wanted an international private circuit to their branch in Paris over a weekend, they discovered that France Telecom were working to rule and would only speak to people in French. Sylvie Toscano, who is fluent in French, not only handled the job, but supplied translation facilities so that the customer could find out what was going on. She even stayed by her home phone on Sunday to help the customer through the last stages. And for that, she won a personal commitment award. Brilliant! And people from all parts of BT are winning these awards every month for all sorts of things. These two engineers, Mark James and Andy Roberts, won an award for installing 40% of the radio systems in Wales and the West over the last year and for consistently putting the customer first. Essentially, they're all demonstrating their personal commitment to delighting the customer and showing that, yes, it can be done. After all, delighting the customer is the only thing that matters because customers that aren't delighted aren't customers for long. So, what are you waiting for? Things have to change for BT to survive, but after all, satisfying the customer is a more satisfying job. Doesn't it always feel better to say yes rather than no? So if you can make that leap, then the sky's the limit!